Today we're taking a look at Project Z, a new free-to-play co-op zombie shooter set in World War II in which you can play through a co-op story with friends and take care of your central hub. You can find food, water, gas, and other resources to give the people or NPCs in your hub a chance to survive. This game is being developed by 314 Arts, who was actually one of the first dev teams that I've ever covered in early access way back in the day with their first project, Police Infinity. It wasn't that great, but they took a lot of things that we said, a lot of criticisms that the community levied towards them, and they made that game into something a lot better than when it was initially launched. And now they're going on to create a new game that is going to Kickstarter on April 29th. They just released a 25 minute dev vlog with gameplay and more information about not only the Kickstarter, but a lot of features that are going to be implemented into the game. Leave a like on the video and subscribe for more content just like this. We're covering all the indie and AAA FPSs that we possibly can. And while you guys are at it, pick up a t-shirt at ttkapparel.com. We got PTFO, we got embroidered TTK, PTFO box, we got a nice gold design for spring, and we also have my personal favorite new design. Play the fucking objective. These designs are all about my community playing the fucking objective, tactical gameplay, teamwork before everything else, so go pick up a t-shirt. Enough about that, let's jump into the dev blog. I hope you guys like it. Hey survivors, and welcome to DevLog 5. This devlog is packed with cool new stuff and finally core gameplay. But we want that nice. you guys keep in mind that all of the stuff we're showing is a work in progress, and you guys can definitely see why we need the Kickstarter campaign to complete this game. Mm -hmm. If you are interested in the Kickstarter campaign, check out the first link in the description. We can also finally reveal that our Kickstarter will start on April 29th, 2022. So nice. Stay tuned. But first of all, for the new people here watching, here's a quick part of what Project Z really is. Okay. Project Z is a free-to-play zombie co-op shooter set in World War II. Choose a character that has an ability that favors your playstyle. Play through the co-op story with your friends and take care of your hub. Find food, water, gas and okay. other resources to give the people in your hub a chance to survive. Find other survivors during the missions and shelter them. But be aware, every decision you and your friends make will influence the morale inside the hub. Be a judge and decide what will happen to the people that do not follow the rules. Be a leader and prioritize the resources you find. Are you going to upgrade your weapons okay. and characters? or do you help someone? It's all up to you and your friends. Project Z is not just a basic zombie co-op game, it's also a management game. But for the people who just want to shoot zombies, Project Z also offers a zombie wave mode inspired by Call of Duty Black Ops 1. That's cool. We heard you loud and clear. You guys want to see gameplay. And we now think it's the right time, but before we start with the gameplay, I want to tell you how the level design of Project Z works. Usually, okay. a mission will start with a linear design and a few options for looting here and there. The focus of the first part is more about getting into the story. After that, the level design will lead you into the second section of the map, which is more open but still linear. It is designed to feel open with areas to explore, loot and finally find AI survivors. The third section is the most interesting one. After the second section, you will see a very open level. You can okay. compare the size of that section with the map customs from Escape from Tarkov. Oh shit! In this section, you can do whatever you want. You can explore, you can kill and wow. loot zombies, you can find other AI survivors, and you can do side missions, and all of that is happening in the third section of the level design. Okay. If it is a supply mission, the player can choose when he wants to end the mission. If he's ready to go back, he can call someone from his hub, an AI survivor to be particular. After that, you have to go to one of the exit points that you've got from the AI. If you've completed the mission successfully, you can choose in which section of the map you want to get deployed for the second run. So for okay. instance, after the first run, you can spawn instantly in section 3. It's important to know that our level design will not have the same pattern every time. I'm not going to lie, that's actually more ambitious than I thought it was initially going to be. He's saying section 3 is going to be the size of customs from Escape from Tarkov. That's actually pretty cool. We still want wow. to reserve the creative freedom to swap some sections here and there. Yeah. Today's gameplay is happening in the first section of a supply mission. That's over so here. So it will be more linear. Linear. Enjoy. Okay. All right. Let's jump in, let's see it. I'm, I've been anxious for a long time, man. Okay guys, we are running out of resources. Prototype build. Jamie and I saw that we got almost nothing left in the stack, which is a bit devastating. But I also have some good news. This one person called Klaus told me that he saw his old Nazi comrades evacuating one of their facilities. So it seems like the zombies invaded that place as well. 
He also said that one of his friends worked in that facility and it was responsible for delivering food and water down to the village in the south. We asked a few other survivors and it seems like he's telling the truth. Okay. So the plan is to find the entrance of the facility and to get in. If you're inside, try to find as much useful stuff as you can. If you got everything we need, take the back exit, which leads you to the village. Maybe you should check that area as well, but if you're ready for the pickup, you know my frequency. I will send you one of our drivers as soon as I got the call. Okay. Okay, so this is as close as we can get. Find the complex? Okay. Oh yeah, man, you, you can see those animations there. That's your that's your um oh god, I can't remember what uh what asset pack that is, but uh yeah. Okay. Okay. Oh, where's our checkpoints? Yo, th those first person yeah, animations are actually time. pretty I good. Try to get something out of this. Okay, so we got looting. Perfect. I got something. Iron, rubber, power cable. Okay, now we have a container. So, okay. Interesting. Okay, so, oh shit. Where did his buddy go? Ooh. Press H to heal. Okay, so you can heal. You can loot. Okay, now he doesn't have to heal unless his, did his buddy heal? Oh, okay. Yeah, those first person animations are pretty good. The water on the camera is a little too disorienting for me. Um... I, I, it's a little too high. Oh, see? That must be the main street that Klaus is talking about. Looks like they got over there. I, I, I get what they're going yeah, for. We need to be careful. Reflections on, like, the water and the mud and shit? That looks pretty good. The game visually looks really good. I, I uh... I, I like what I'm seeing. Those, yeah, those animations are solid. Third-person animations definitely need some work. Um, but I like that. The lighting on this map is really, really good. Boom. I don't know why I, I get really big Dead Island vibes from the melee attacks. Which is a good thing. Is this a flare gun? That was weird. Was the lights outside still work? I know that the power grid failed weeks ago, so there needs to be a generator somewhere. Yeah, you, you can, can um, you can definitely see the lag, uh, or I, I should say, like the hiccuping when you see his buddy on screen. Uh, so definitely early, like early production, like they say here. But there's a lot of good things going on here. Lighting, the environments are really good. First person animations look really good. I like the idea of rain hitting the screen like this. It's just they got it turned up too high. There's too much. Um, inventory system looks cool for like a first iteration. I'm 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 actually really impressed. All right then. Yeah, that that's definitely got to be refined. Uh, but I'm glad that they have this system here. That guy had a was that a gas mask? Yeah, this lighting looks awesome. All right. Yeah, bro. That third person animation. That's rough. Yeah, this looks really good. All right, we can loot. It looks like we can loot every vehicle. At least every one we've seen so far, right? Oh, there's actually two loot spots on the truck. Okay. I see. So iron, rubber, electronics, and power cable again. Okay. 
So those must be like passive items that you collect that don't actually... I wonder if they go into your inventory. Because like that kind of looting, it just kind of pops up on the side. So that must just be like a collection thing. Probably maybe for crafting or something you can do back at your base. Um... Iron wire, rubber, electronic. Oh, shit. Ooh. Oh, he's got a nice little tack sprint in there. That's cool. Reload animations on point. The dismemberment looked pretty cool there. Gore. Shit, man. These guys are cooking. I'm actually really impressed. Really, really impressed. Okay, it looks like you can check ammo. Was that what that was? He's going for the melee. <sighs> melee looks a little weird because it looks like the, the hit of the zombie, like... I don't know. There's some, there's some there's some weird AI glitches there, but I mean that's honestly at this point in the game to be expected, right? Okay, building materials. So building materials, yeah, that must be something that you could do back at your base. There was a zombie back there. He's just gonna keep moving. This looks really good. Or Germans. Oh. Wow. Okay, container, nothing in it. Yeah, there's a lot of dismemberment. They the, the particle effects are a little wonky, just from what I'm seeing. Like they explode. It's not very realistic, but it looks kind of cool. Yeah, they're making uh, a lot of noise here. Okay. Now he's got a pistol in the secondary. And let's... I would love to see him switch to it right now. There we go. Nice. Wow. Are you seeing the lights over there? Their, uh, their systems they got in place, this is, uh, this is pretty impressive. I really want to play this. Oh shit, there's the generator. Okay. A lot of different guns in the game so far. That's cool. Look, a lot of different weapons. He's got a compass. Supply run toxic underground. I love their HUD too. It's minimal. You pull out the compass. It shows the objective that you need to accomplish up in the corner. I like it. Oh, they got to bring the generator. Oh. So it's co-op, so I'm guessing the other person has to, like, drag the trailer with the generator on it. Oh, shit. Oh, shit. Good stuff. Good stuff. Power's out. Connect the generator's power plug with the bunker. Oh, so they're powering the bunker. Yeah. They're making a lot of fucking noise. There's not a lot of zombies in the area. So we're, we're not seeing, you know, uh, World War Z level of zombies, which is an okay thing. That's cool. So we got the cable. Oh, dope. That's cool. Wow. They spelled the word access wrong on the on the top of the, the journal there. Open the bunker gate to exit or to enter it. Okay, so boom. Bunker gate open. 
Zombies came out of nowhere. Oh, he's got to reload. Okay, so that's cool. Yeah, you got to pull out your... Uh... Oh, he doesn't have anything. Oh, shit. Reload animations on point. Combat looks pretty solid so far. Man, I'm impressed. I, I really am. Honestly, bro, a co-op co game like this, I would play the shit out of it. I, I would play the absolute shit out of this. I'm not sure if it's going to be like two-player co-op or if you can get four players in there. But, wow. Yeah, that would be sick. I also like that they have the balls to put the swastikas in. That, that, that's one thing I will say. I saw a couple of them back there, but they were a little hidden. That one was plain sight. I fucking can't stand when companies want to just rewrite history. This is really cool. Damn. This is dope, dude. Hey, by the way, if you guys are watching, leave a comment down below at this point. Let me know what you guys think, man. I hope you liked it. Again, a great reminder that this is the first section of a mission. Yeah. The map will get more open after playing through the other sections of the map. Sure. But I think you can get a lot out of this gameplay. For instance, you finally saw how you collect building materials and how the first yeah. section of a mission works. And you saw the main ability of Curtis. And as I said earlier, the Kickstarter for Project Z will launch on April 29th. And right. in the following days, we will reveal the tiers and perks. So follow us on Twitter and apply to our newsletter to get okay. notified. But now I will give the microphone to Stefan because he also made some awesome progress with the zombie concepts. And I really want you guys to see it. Hey, what's up? I'm Stefan, a Teams Concert Artist, and I'm going to be telling you more about the zombies today. Now, what's up, dude? We're looking at two types in particular today, but before I tell you more about the individual types, I will first give you a quick rundown on the general decisions we have arrived at so far. Nice, Les Paul, my we guy. We decided that the appearance of the zombies is more resembling of bacterial and viral infections and less of fungi, and also that their appearance is influenced by the environment that they reside in, which basically means in military areas they might have barbed wire caught on them, there is in swamps, they might have different and more extreme types of infections and mold on them and so forth. We are exploring many ideas and creating a diverse pool of zombies while keeping the historic setting in mind. Cool. So on screen right now we see the regular grunts you will mostly encounter in the game. The ones you see are based on SS soldiers and show you the various states of the zombie type and how this particular zombie could be iterated on to create multiple unique zombies. Yeah, that's actually cool. Another similar sheet shows one of the special mutations we have been cooking up. The zombie I'm talking about can't see and relies on this incredible hearing sense. Right. The crackling noise of their radio communication devices is a dead giveaway that you have to watch out. If they become more aware of your presence, the crackling will gradually intensify That's and stabilize sweet. as they try to make out your location. And if they eventually find you, they will alarm any nearby zombies, which can quickly endanger your mission. The only reference footage, nothing of this is in game. Okay. Oh, okay. I see. But That's cool. My side. Let's go back to what a level designer has to say. And with that said, take it away, Justin. Thank you, Stefan. Directly after Devlog 4, we started working on this mission. I yeah. wrote down some of my ideas and tried them out in-engine by whiteboxing some of the parts. At this time, we played a lot to find out if the mission we've planned is working as intended. Yeah. <laughs> but a few passes later I went to Stefan and finally asked him if he could make me some concepts for the stuff I made. After a few back Fuck and forth yeah. we ended up with the concept for the mood of the scene and That's I was cool. finally able to work on adding some foliage and detail to the map. That's super cool. Yeah. 
In the meantime, Stefan and Jan were working on the gate from the first concept. Yeah. Yeah, that looks sweet, man. We also started working on a wave mode map. We think it's a great idea to make a map inside a survivor hideout because if we do that, we can save a bit of time by designing a map and the idea of how the hub can turn out later at the same right. time. For that, I went to my good old friend Stefan again. He made me an awesome concept for the map and the hub. Wow. So again, I was whiteboxing the map. This he does time, great concept work, you, man. Wow. Fly throughs and gameplay snippets in the background right now. Cool. Yeah, that concept art is absolutely incredible. In terms of the wave mode, we got a lot of feedback from you in the last few months. Okay. One of the things we have changed is how the zombie drops work. Instead of dropping a gigantic 3D icon, zombies will now drop cigarette cards inspired by real world cards from the 1940s. Okay. Oh, that's we also cool. changed how the weapon purchase works. Instead of icons on the wall, you will see weapon crates laying around. Right. Before you can buy weapons from a certain crate, you have to open the box for X amount of Reichsmark. After that, you can see which weapon is inside of that crate. From there on, you can buy the weapon that's inside the box. Got you. Okay. Thanks, guys. That was awesome. To improve the feel of the game for playtests and devlogs, we have also added new player models that replace the wow. dummy. However, please be aware that these are also placeholders. They look pretty First good. First dedicated healing item was also added. The bench. Yeah. We've also added a new gameplay mechanic. Gas masks. Wearing one is required for certain level parts to be able to traverse them due to toxic gases in the area. Yeah. That's sweet. Yep. It's kind of hard to tell that you're wearing one, but... Of course, new weapons have also been added. Yeah, man. First, we got the Delizli. Those look so good. And the M8097 shotgun. Fuck yeah, man. And another secret weapon, but I'll get to that later. That's cool. The first active character ability has also been implemented. Okay. We've talked about the abilities since the beginning, but we can finally show you what they are and how they work. Ever since we designed the abilities, we did not want them to be visually dominant like in hero shooters. The flare gun is the pilot's active ability. Active abilities are immediately unlocked together with the character and can be upgraded. Okay, so it is a flare. Gun simply lose zombies that are not actively engaging an enemy away. Right. However, it can be upgraded to an attack weapon and also a teamwork weapon. Oh, that's cool. For that, you have the skill tree in which you can upgrade the main ability. Every Sweet. Every character has three skill trees. One of them is the main ability skill tree that wow. you can see right now and two others for upgrading vital stats and adding more side abilities. To be able to upgrade your skills you simply have to level up your character by playing missions. On the first upgrade tier of the skill tree you can choose between the zombies focusing the player with the highest amount of health after the flare is burned out or extend the lifetime of the flare. The second upgrade tier will set the zombies on fire when you directly hit them with the flare. On the third and final upgrade tier you can choose between the flare exploding at the end or setting zombies on fire that come close. And now to the secret weapon that I've talked about earlier. Okay. Dedicated melee weapons have also been added to the game. Yeah. The first one here we've added is a modified table leg. When you hit a zombie, you can either push him back or have him ragdoll if he isn't killed That's the right sweet. Way. So it's a knockback. The weapon okay. system in general has also been updated. The movement sway of the weapons was improved as well as new added kickback when firing full auto. Yeah, it does look you can good. also hold your breath on any weapon now for improved accuracy. Cool. Boom. Awesome. Yeah, that looks good too. I like that scope. Our characters have also learned to talk now. When performing certain actions, your character might say something. I wonder if I can find anything useful like this. <laughs> Reloading. We have also added Steam Audio into the game. 
If you don't know what Steam Audio is, it is an audio engine that actually simulates things like sound propagation, occlusion and reflection. It absolutely changed the immersion level in the game. Take a listen. Oh yeah, wow. Hell yeah, dude. Yeah, that's really good. Shit, there's a lot of games that could take notes on that right there. God damn, dude. And last but not least, we have added tactical sprinting. It yeah, that, your yeah. Stamina very quickly, but get you out of a salty situation with the Hell yeah. You can also go from tactical to not tactical sprint without stopping to save on stamina once you are out of immediate danger. Okay. Back to Justin. Cool. It looks good, now, man. to the most important part. Our Kickstarter campaign. Yeah. Our Kickstarter will start on April 29th at okay. 5 p.m. PST. So in the following weeks, we will reveal new videos to keep you guys in the loop. We have worked so hard to get to this point, and we hope that you believe and trust us enough to fund this game. We have a clear vision of what we want to create, and we are confident enough to say that we can do it. Thank you so much for the one and a half year in which you helped us to stay motivated. Yeah. The entire team had to work countless hours in their free time to achieve what Project it is right now. That's, so I want that's to say amazing, thank you man. to this incredible team working on this project. That's it for now, guys. Follow us on Twitter, YouTube, and subscribe to our newsletter. And also, don't forget to subscribe to our Kickstarter page. Thank you so much, and have a nice weekend. Hey, good for them, man. That's what's up, dude. That's a success story right there. So listen, I know this video was a long one. I apologize. The dev vlog was really long, and I just wanted to give you guys my raw thoughts on everything going on surrounding Project Z. If you guys made it this far, please leave a like on the video, but more importantly, leave a comment down below and let me know what you guys think about this game. It's going to Kickstarter at the end of the month, April 29th. I myself am going to back it because not only does this look like a quality product, the fact is, is I watched these guys go from the early days of Police Infinity putting a game out and it just wasn't that good. I've watched them develop that game and, and turn into an actual quality indie studio that is doing something that not a lot of people can actually do and that's make a, a zombie survival shooter but make it actually be interesting with a hub kind of like escape from tarkov ambitious kind of open more level designs like when you get into section three they said it's going to be the size of customs these guys are doing something really really cool and i'm really glad to see them kind of grow from the early days to where they are now thank you guys for watching shout out to every single member who supports this channel you guys are the ones who are allowing me to do what I do, cover all of the new games, and you guys are just fucking amazing. I love my community so much, and I'm going to keep doing these videos as long as I possibly can. My name is Big Fry. Thank you guys for watching. Have a safe day, and I'll see you on the next one.